Hey my little rainbows and welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm going to be going over something that was highly requested. I got a lot of questions asking me what reshade preset I use and how to use it and how I take my pictures and how I edit my pictures that I post on Instagram and show in my videos. So I finally filmed a tutorial for you guys and I'm actually splitting it up into two parts. So in this video, I'm going to go over how to download and install reshade, how to download my reshade preset, how to use it and how I take my pictures. And then in the second video, I'm going to show you guys how I edit my pictures. That video is linked in the description below along with all the other links that I mentioned. So just make sure to check the video description for anything that you need that I mentioned in this video. Before we begin the video, just a disclaimer that Reshade is only available for Windows computers. It's not available on console. It's not available on Mac. It does require a lot of power and it's a pretty advanced software that can slow down your game if you don't have the right equipment. So if you're already experiencing a lot of lag in your game, Reshade probably isn't going to help that. It might make it lag more. And if that is the case for you, I would just advise you to be very careful when installing Reshade. First, I'm going to show you how to install Reshade and download my preset. If you already have Reshade installed and know how to download presets, then feel free to skip to the time on the screen. But before you do, keep in mind that I will show you what effects you need to have installed for my Reshade preset when I show you how to download it. When I I first started using Reshade, I had no idea what I was doing. It's very overwhelming, but you get used to it with practice. And I also watched my friend Tally's Reshade tutorial and it was very helpful. So I'm gonna link that below. I'm gonna show you how to install Reshade too, but it might be helpful to also watch Tally's video if you're having trouble with it. Your computer and setup might also be different from mine. So it might be helpful to watch other Reshade tutorials as well, but I will definitely try to explain it the best I can. All right, so the first thing we have to to do is install reshade we're going to go to reshade.me and then we are going to click i agree and download and it'll bring us down here and the latest version as of this video being made is 4.9.1 and then it will download here it should show up in our download folder so just wait for it to download first and we're going to click on that so this little thing will show up and it says click here to select a game and manage its reshade installation so click on that then we're gonna go to browse. Now this might be different on everyone's computer depending on how your files are laid out. The most common way and the way it is for me is to go to Windows, your C drive, go to program files x86, and then you're going to go to origin games and then click on the Sims 4. And then you're going to go to the game folder and then you're gonna click on bin and you're gonna to go to TS4X64. You might also have either in this folder or a different folder that just says TS4. Make sure not to click that one. You want the one that says X64 because with the TS4, it's just going to say that it downloaded Reshade when it really didn't. So make sure not to click that one. So we're going to click on Direct 3D9. Next, it's going to ask you what effects you want to install. So you might already have some effects installed if you already use Reshade, or if you want to download other ones, you can as well. Feel free to download as many as you want. Just keep in mind that the more effects you have installed, the more it might slow down your game. But for my Reshade preset specifically, what you want to select on this screen is Sweet FX by CJ, Quint by Marty McFly, and Otis FX by Otis. So we're going to select all three of those and then say OK. And then what you want to select from Sweet FX is Technicolor, Technicolor 2, and Vibrance. Click OK. And then for Quint, what you want to install is Quint MXAO and Quint Sharp. So we're gonna get those two and say, okay. And then from Otis FX, you're going to select cinematic DOF, which stands for depth of field and then click okay. And then it says reshade setup was successful. So we're gonna exit out of this. So once you download my reshade preset from my Patreon, it's free for everyone. The Patreon post should be available for the public. So you can find the file to download on that post. So this is what you're gonna download. Once you download it, it'll show up in your downloads folder. It's called mirror ray preset. What we're going to do is we're going to open a new window and we're gonna go to the same place where we went to open our game when we were installing reshade. So I'm gonna right click Windows C and open a new window. 
video, and then we're going to go to, again, Program Files, x86, and then we're gonna to go to Origin Games, The Sims 4, Game, Bin, and then here is where you will find the reshade presets. There might be some other files in here, just ignore those. Um, or if you have other reshade presets, then that is where they will show up. But what we're going to do is drag the file from the download. So my preset, we're going to click and drag it into here. So that is how you install reshade and how you put my reshade preset into your game. And before you open your game, there is one other thing you wanna make sure that you do, and that is disable origin in game. If it's an Enabled in game, then in create a sim and during the camera mode, your camera might go a little crazy. So to do this, open origin and then click on origin application settings and then click on origin in game and make sure it's turned off. Make sure it's not green. If it's enabled, it will be green. If it's disabled, it will be gray and it will say zero. So make sure that is disabled in game. So after you've installed Reshade and opened your game, you should get this menu that pops up. So this is the menu for Reshade. And right now, before we go into the game, we are going to set our overlay key, our effect toggle key, our screenshot key, and our screenshot path. The overlay key is what you're going to press when you open the menu. So that is to open this. Mine is set to shift N. All you have to do is click in here. So then you see the blinking cursor and then you are going to just press the buttons you want to open the menu. For example, if I wanted mine to be shift V, then I just click shift V or I have mine set to shift N. So that's what I'm going to do. And then that will set your key to open and close the reshade menu. And then for effect toggle key, that is how you turn on and off your reshade effect. Mine is already set to shift B. You don't have to set it as the same ones I do, but I thought it might just help to know what I have, but whatever's easiest for you guys, you guys can set yours too. So that is for the effect toggle key. And then screenshot key is the key you're going to use to take pictures. So you want it to be different than the C key, which is what you take pictures with in game. You just usually press C on your keypad. However, if you do that, that won't have reshade on it for those pictures. So you need to set a separate screenshot key. So I have mine set to shift B. Next, you're gonna set your screenshot path. So this is where you want your screenshots to show up on your, like in your files, in your file explorer. So what you do is you would just go to where you want your screenshots to be, and then you would copy the path, and then you would paste it into here. I have mine set to C, Users, RJP, OneDrive, Documents, Electronic Arts, The Sims 4, and then Screenshots, which is usually where my screenshots go anyway. But if you have a separate folder you want it to go into, then you can set it as that. Once you have those set, there is one more thing we need to do before we start taking pictures. First, you're gonna go to the Home tab, and then you're going to go to Edit Global Processor Definitions. And you'll see four things listed here. You wanna make sure that the first one is set at 1,000, and you wanna make sure that the last three are set at zero. There's a chance that when you first First install reshade or if you update reshade it might change one of these to one that is going to completely mess up the reshade so make sure all of these are set to zero so you can exit out of the reshade menu and then one tip I have before we start taking the pictures is to this might be a given but is to set your graphic settings to ultra in the game I know that can be a lot for computers that are already having trouble running the sims I know it depends on your system but really to get the best pictures you want to make sure that your graphic settings are set to ultra so once you have the settings the way you want on the menu, you're going to go into your game and into live mode, bring out the sims that you want to take pictures of, make sure that they're in the outfits that you want to take pictures of them in, and bring them to the place you want the pictures at. So these are sims for my royal family series. I'm not going to go in too much detail about them because I don't want to spoil anything if you haven't seen it yet, but the link to my series is in the description below if you are interested. So the mods you're going to need to take pictures are pose player and the teleporter mod. I also recommend getting MC Command Center. It is very, very useful, and I will show you guys why in a bit. Now with the reshade presets, I change the settings depending on the time of day, if you're taking pictures at night or during the day, depending on the weather, depending on if you're indoors or outdoors. 
The preset that you guys have downloaded is set to take the best pictures at around 12 p.m. and when it is warm and sunny outside. So you can change the weather and the time with MC Command Center, which is why I recommend downloading it. You just go to a mailbox, you go to MC Cheats, you can change world time, so hours offset, so it goes forward. So for example, if it was 12 a.m. already, I would click 12 and then it would shoot me to 12 p.m. So it would go 12 hours forward and then I would click OK, but I'm already around 12 p.m. So I'm not going to do that. Um, and then you can also set the weather by going to MC Cheats and then going to Seasons Cheat. This is only if you have the Seasons expansion pack. So Seasons Cheats. And then I right now have it set to summer um, and things do change depending on the season, but I'm gonna set mine to summer and then change weather. And then next I go to sunny warm. So then I have that set and then I click how many hours I want it set to. I usually do like a hundred hours just in case. And then I would click okay, but I'm already at sunny warm. So I'm just going to leave that. So that is what my reshade preset, the one you guys have downloaded, that is what is best set, that is what it is best set for. And then I will show you guys after we take a few pictures, I'll show you how to change the settings depending on where you're taking the pictures or what time of day it is. With Andrew's Post Player, I'm actually gonna use MC Command Center. Um, you could also go into build mode and type in teleport um, for the teleporter mod. And I could place two here on top of each other. Oh, oh, okay, yeah. So I'm not gonna do that because I'm actually taking picture off the lot, but you would actually put these on top of each other. So I'm doing two. Um, so I would put two teleporters down and then you could pose them using that. There are a bunch of teleporter and pose player tutorials out there. So I will link one below if you want to see more details about it. But we're gonna use MC Command Center because we are taking pictures off the lot also with the teleporter mod, if you like go into build mode because you need anything, they will immediately unpose and I hate that so much. So we're not gonna use that. You do need the teleporter mod though if we were to take a picture like uh, with an object like on a chair or something like that, but we don't need that at the moment. So we're going to MC Command Center, Sim Commands. Desta's in the place where I want them to be to take pictures. So I'm going to teleport Adric to her. So I go to teleport commands and then teleport lot sim because Adric is here. And then I teleport Adric onto her. So I know it looks a little freaky that their faces are like merged together. I'm like so used to it at this point, so I don't mind. But yeah, at, at first it can be a little bit jarring. But now we're going to pose them with the pose that we want to use. So sorry, you click on them and then you go to pose by pack, but you're going to scroll and try to find the pose that you want. So it is called us three pose pack by Catverse, which I will link below. And I'm going to pick M5 for Adric and then for Desta, I'm going to go pose by pack and then scroll down to the pose. I, someone's asked me before how to organize their poses um, because they use Wicked Whims and there's like a different pose player for that. I don't use Wicked Whims, so I unfortunately do not know. Um, but yeah, there's not really a way to organize this unless you take out the poses you're not using in your mods folder. Um, but for Dustin, I'm gonna do F5 and then I'm going to click play and they're going, oh, uh oh, she's feeling sick. Um, all right, then they're gonna pose, okay. I know her hand's going through her belly. That's called clipping, and I'm gonna show you guys how to fix that in a second. Um, I do recommend too, before you pose, I should have showed you guys this before, but before you pose them, go into game options and go into gameplay and turn autonomy off and also check the disable autonomy for selected sim because otherwise they might just move around and do what they want before you pose them. So I recommend turning this off. I also have my aging turned off because when I am trying to change the time of day. It always fast forward, you can't go back in time, you can only go forward. So I turn it off so no one is aging before I am ready for them to. So yeah, just make sure autonomy is turned off. And then if you are having, like for example, they're the only two Sims in the household, so they have like the headlines on. So I go to Control Shift C for the cheats bar, and I type in headline effects off and that'll turn them off. And then you could just do headline effects on if you wanna turn them back on. Okay, before I talk about the clipping, we're just going to set the angle that we want. So I am going to do it kind of from the side here, and then I'm going to turn my effect on so I can see what it looks like. With my effect, it's called cinematic depth of field that makes the background blurry. 
you have to be having the mouse over their face in order for their faces to be clear. So like if I went off, usually it might blur out like the front of their face too, but not this time. Um, so I just have to make sure the mouse is hovering over their faces. And let me pick the camera angle that I want. And then while I'm doing this, I just wanna mention a couple other tips that I have when taking pictures. I recommend not taking pictures too far away. It just, to me, I like them better close. I mean, that might just be a preference thing, but I prefer to have them closer. I know sometimes you wanna like see the whole outfit that the Sim has, but to really fill the picture and to make it more eye-catching, I always find that closer pictures, like if you're closer to the Sim, those tend to be better. I also recommend playing around with angles. You can play around and see what you like. There's no really specific angle that I can tell you guys to take pictures from. It's really a preference thing. Okay, so we're gonna take the picture from this angle. Now for clipping, like with her hand going through her belly, um, there is a way to fix that. I'm going to show you in the second video that I mentioned at the beginning of this video on how I edit my pictures. I'm gonna show you guys how I get rid of that in the editing, but this is definitely helpful to know now. If you're planning on doing that later, then you wanna follow these steps right here. You're gonna have to take two pictures and you want to set this as a camera angle so that way when I go into MC Command Center and I'm actually going to make her, like turn her belly, her pregnancy belly, I'm gonna change it to like first semester, or not first semester, first trimester. Um, so that way we can see her hand. So I have to save the camera angle in order to do that. That is like very, very important. So there is a, like the Sims game comes with camera controls and to save a camera angle, you're you're going to click on your keyboard for Windows, it is Control 5. So you can either do Control 5, Control 6, Control 7, Control 8, or Control 9. I'm going to do Control 5, and that will save the camera angle for you. And then to double check to make sure that it did save, you want to like go to the side and then just click on 5. You don't have to click Control again. If you clicked Control 5 again, that would save the like this camera angle, and we don't want that. We wanna to go to the camera angle that we chose, so just click on five. So then that saves it and brings us back. And then I'm going to take the picture using Shift B. So that is what I have my screenshot key set to. Make sure that line comes up because that's how you know you've taken the picture. So once you do that, it should end up in the destination that you have set for your folder, for your screenshot folder. And once it has taken that, I tend to do like a couple angles just in case because I crop my pictures like portrait style, which means like this gets cut off and this side gets cut off. So I wanna make sure like I either get everyone in there or that it's like close enough or something. So I'm going to do just like one more camera angle. I'm gonna actually just do one a little bit further back just in case I like this angle better. So then once I have that set, I'm going to do control six and I always check to make sure the angle saves. So I just move to the side and then go to six and then I'm going to take that picture, so Shift V. And then, I'm sorry, I should have said this before, but with the camera feature to get into that mode, to get into camera mode, you're gonna click Tab, and that's how you get there. I'm gonna link a more detailed tutorial to show you guys how to use the camera controls, but um, to zoom in, you just click Z, so that zooms in and out is Z, and then X is to zoom out, and then to move forward is W, to move backward is S, to move left is A, and then to move right is D, and then you move the mouse to move the camera, but that will only move if your mouse is not showing. So you have to click to make it not show, and then you can move it around, you can look up or you can look down, and then to make the camera not move, and if you like need your mouse for something, then you just click and then your mouse should show up. All right, so now we're gonna take care of the clipping. So we are going to click on her, go to MC Command Center. So this works for your pregnant sims because ju this just happens. It's actually very common for the clipping to occur, not just for pregnant sims, but for a lot of other sims too. Um, but I'm gonna go to MC Pregnancy, go to Pregnancy Phase, and then click on not showing. And then that will show us her hand. So I'll show you how I'm gonna do this in a second. If for example, his hand was going through her shoulder, I would actually have to make her stop posing and move her to the side and then go back to the camera angles that we had saved and like just take pictures of Adric by himself. 
And it would be the same process that I'm about to show you with like her hand on her belly. So that's what I would have to do if, for example, like his hand was going through her shoulder or something like that. So again, we're going to go back to camera mode, click on the first angle I saved with five, the number five on my keyboard, and then turn on reshade and then take this picture. So go to shift B. And then I'm going to the second angle that I saved with six, the number six. So then I go to shift V to take that picture. And then we have that all taken care of and that is ready for editing. However, before I show you guys my editing process, I'm going to show you how to mess with the settings depending on if you're taking pictures at night or if you're taking pictures indoors or like with different weather. So you're going to open the menu. I'm going to real quick show you guys what each of the effects in my preset does. I have vibrance. Uh, actually, I'm gonna turn off the depth of field um, just so it doesn't be, it's not like too distracting, but I have vibrance, which honestly doesn't make that much of a difference. It's supposed to make it a little bit more colorful. However, I don't have mine set to be very strong. I just have it there just in case I want to make the vibrance more or less to do that you would change it here. So right now I have set it to 0 0.220. So I'm going to like, if I want to make it less or if I want to make it more, I can do that as well. Um, but I'm going to set my back to 0.220. So that's not the most necessary thing in the world, but I have it there just in case. And then for the next effect, so this is MXAO, which makes them have more depth and it adds more shading to the Sims. I love MXAO, but I also hate MXAO sometimes. It's very complicated and I will show you guys why. So you guys can see it with and without. So if, when I uncheck it, this is without MXAO. You guys can see all the shading is gone. They don't look like, I guess, as 3D. And then this is with MXAO back on. So the thing with this is that, so I'm gonna take away the menu so you guys can see. So if you guys can see the like lines on her, this is really not that bad, but I will show you guys how to get rid of this during my editing process. These lines on her are from MXAO. They get stronger if you zoom out using X, you guys can see like more lines appear. Like if I go forward using W, you guys, I know it's a little freaky, but like you guys can see all the lines showing up. So that's what happens if you're completely zoomed out with MXAO and like move close. The best thing for MXAO is to be completely zoomed in with Z as close as you can get and then like bring the camera back. That will make the lines disappear. But we're gonna bring the menu back if you want to adjust it. So to bring you to the settings, like if I was scrolled up all the way and I couldn't find MXAO on the settings here, then I would uncheck it and then check it and then it'll bring you to the settings. So the only thing you want to touch here is the ambient occlusion amount and I have mine in the preset set to three. So just remember that in case you do make any changes. It goes all the way up to four. If I wanted to make it stronger, I would bring it all the way up to four. So you have to click on it and drag it to the right. So you guys can see there's a bit more shading here. Um, and then if I want to make it weaker, then I would just keep clicking and dragging. It goes all the way to zero. So I would just keep clicking and dragging until I got the amount I want, but like just a little bit less for MXAO. If it is too strong for you, um, then you can bring it down to like one point something. And you guys can see it's a little bit less shading, but it still has a little bit of the depth there. I'm gonna bring mine back to three though, but that is really the only thing I recommend touching in these settings for MXAO. Next I have Technicolor and Technicolor 2, which kind of work together. So that is what's giving all, like besides vibrance, it's giving all the color and the lighting. You guys can see it with it off and with it on and what it does. This is where I'm going to show you how to make adjustments depending on the time of day. Let me go to, let me take out the menu. Let me turn off the effect. We're going to change the time to evening. So let's do like, let's go five hours forward. Uh, oh, and then click, okay. All right, so now they're, and then they're actually like in the shade too, so this is perfect. So if I go back here, I just clicked five to bring me back. And then I turn the effect back on and then bring the menu back up. So now you guys can see that they're like, their faces are a little bit darker now. So if I wanted to make it brighter, like for example, if you're taking a sunset picture and you want the sky to have like the sunset in the back, so that might make their faces a little bit darker. So then you would want to adjust the brightness for that. I recommend going for Technicolor. You're going to go to power and you're going to bring it up. So right now in the preset, it's set to 2.224. 
So you're going to bring it up to make things brighter. However, when you bring it up, it will make the colors less vibrant. So you can adjust that using the saturation here. I have my saturation set to 1.239. If I brought this back, however, so what I do, 2.224. Two, two All right, so I set mine to what it was before. If you wanna just set it like one more or one less, you can also just click the arrows to get it more adjusted. It did, like one doesn't make that much of a difference, but if you wanna be picky about it. So my original settings again for power was 2.224. So that was under just Technicolor. Then Technicolor 2 for the brightness, saturation, and strength. That is set to, for brightness, 1.454. Saturation, 1.239. And then for strength, 0.919. So then moving on to cinematic depth of field. So this is what makes the background blurry. I love cinematic depth of field, it's great. However, it can be difficult sometimes. The things that I would recommend messing with here is the aperture and then maybe far, uh, sorry, far plane max blur and near plane max blur, which is just if you scroll a little bit down, then you will see it. So for aperture, so that's what makes the background more blurry and less blurry. Right now in the preset, it is set to 3.8, which I think is a good medium. So if you make the aperture higher, I think it goes to like 22. Um, so if you make it higher, then it makes the background less blurry, as you guys can see. So this is on like 20. Um, so it makes the background less blurry. And then if you want to bring it down just a little bit, um, you can do that as well. So this is like 5.9, which makes the background still a little blurry, but you can kind of see a little bit more of what's going on behind them. I do have to occasionally mess with the aperture and make it higher because they're luckily not doing it right now. And I have no idea what causes this, but if you see like, a, the best way I can describe it is like a little halo, like a little glow on the outline of like their shoulders or their heads or something. Making the aperture higher will get rid of that. The downside to that is though that it makes the background less blurry, but usually if it's to like six or something like that, it should go away. But you can either make the background less blurry with the aperture for the like that little, I call it like a little halo glow. Um, you can either do it that way or you can fix it in editing. But let me bring that back to 3.8. And then the near plane max blur. This is the only thing you probably actually have to mess with. Far plane max blur just makes the background a little bit less blurry. Um, so I have mine set all the way to four, which is the highest it goes. And then for near plane max blur, so that would make them, like if I have the focus being, I don't know, like this leaf, then the near plane max blur makes them blurry. So whatever is closest to them blurry. So it's a stylized thing. You can do it if you would like to. So if I make it a little bit higher, you guys can see, see that they are blurry now if I have the focus on that leaf but not if I bring it back here, then it doesn't make them blurry. So you guys can mess with that if you want to. I'm going to have mine in the preset set to zero. And then the last thing is the DELC sharpen, which it just makes the image a little bit sharper. It doesn't make that much of a difference. I wouldn't recommend messing with it at all. I don't have mine set very strong, but if you did want to make it more strong, you would just bring up the sharpen strength here, but I have it set to 0 0.085, which is not very strong. So those are all the effects to mess with. If you guys do mess up the effects too much um, and you like can't figure out how to get back or you like forgot the numbers to go back to, then you can just re-download the preset and put it back in where the reshade presets go. That would be the best way to do it. If you reset like all to default, it won't bring it back to my settings. It'll bring it back to whatever reshade considers to be the default. But I mess with my settings all the time, to be honest. This is just what I thought would be a good medium for like 12 p.m. and being like a sunny warm day. If you have a preference and wanna make things just like a little bit less bright or a little bit less colorful, you can do that with the settings that I showed you as well. And that is how to install Reshade and use my Reshade preset and how I take my pictures in game. Again, if you want to see how I edit my pictures, then you can wait till the end of this video for the link, or you can click on the link in the description below. I know Reshade can be very overwhelming at first. It does take some time to get used to. It will get less stressful as you use it more, I promise. If you have not already, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on your notifications. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.